Hi, everyone. We're just going to get started in a couple of minutes. We're going to let people come into the Zoom space and then we will get our session started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Caroline Horn. I'm the Assistant Director for New Student Programs here at Bentley. We are excited to present our Financing Your Students' Education live chat today. This is our third of our Falcon live chat series this summer. We do want to let you know that this session is recorded. So if you want to review it at a later time, you can check onto our YouTube channel, our Bentley Orientation YouTube channel, and you can find all of the past recordings on that space. So I'm going to hand it over to one of our student coordinators, Mia Spencer, to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Mia Spencer. I'm a rising junior. I'm from Madison, Connecticut. And I've been working with the orientation program to put on together um, activities for you guys this upcoming fall. And I'm really excited to see everyone in August. And we are excited to have Lauren and Suzanne here with us today to lead this session on financing your students' education. We do have a Q&A se section of this. So if you have any questions, feel free to put those in that chat and we will answer those at the end. So handed it over to Lauren and Suzanne. Great, thanks. Um, I think you've got our PowerPoint to put up there. Um, and I would say for the chat, um, I think we will answer some of your questions along the way. And um, so try to hold them till the end. And then if anything is a little bit more specific, um, you know, to a student's case, we might recommend that you contact uh, one of our offices um, for your, your particular question. We're gonna try to be as general as we can here. Um, but I'm Lauren Sullivan. I'm the director of the Financial Assistance Office. Um, and then Suzanne, if you wanna introduce yourself. I'm Suzanne Burns. I'm the director of the Student Accounts Office. Great. Um, and we will just talk a little bit about um, the costs, funding options and opportunities, and then Suzanne will go into billing and how you can make payments. So I'll kick it off with determining your educational cost. Um, this really is a single slide and it's pretty simple. Um, what I wanna talk about here is the cost of attendance for the 23-24. Now, this is the baseline cost of attendance and you might have other expenses like that you have to think about that aren't necessarily included here, like do you need to buy a winter coat or, or things like that. But I just wanna talk about the things that are pertaining to all students for the cost of it, um, their education excuse me, education. Um, you can stay on this slide for a little bit, sorry. Um, when we're talking about that, this is for the academic year, but when you're being billed, you're actually being billed for two terms, for the fall and for the spring. So you will see these costs split uh, between those terms. Um, when we talk about direct costs, those are costs that are being billed by the university. And as new students, uh, for the most part, we do see students living in um, on campus housing and getting a meal plan, and that's that combined figure there. If you are a commuter student, you would not see housing or a meal plan billed to your account. Uh, you'll also see the student activity fee, which helps supplement all the student activities on campus. And as new students, an additional fee you might see there or would see there is a $250 new student fee that is being billed in the fall only. Um, when we talk about indirect costs, these are costs that are not being billed directly from the university, but are costs you need to consider when financing your education. Those are things like books and supplies, personal expenses during the academic year. So you just need to be aware of all of the things that are gonna cost you and what you're actually gonna see on your bill, which will be those direct costs. So when we go into the financing options um, and uh, funding opportunities, I want to be a little bit broad because I know this that financial aid isn't going to apply to everybody, but um, these are some of the funding opportunities that are out there. You, if you are a student that might have need, um, you can apply for need-based financial aid. At this point, we are still reviewing applications as they come in. I think many people would have already applied, um, but this would be your consideration for Bentley grant funding as well as federal uh, 
grants and loans. You must be a US citizen or permanent resident to apply for this aid. Um, any student that received a scholarship through like a merit scholarship from admission, that would be visible on your bill when you get your bill as well. There's also alternative loan options out there if that's how you would like to finance uh, all of or a portion of your education. Um, there's a website I'll talk about on the next slide, but um, essentially you would apply through a third party, through the lender, they would approve your loan and then that would come to us for certification. There are many lenders out there, but ultimately whatever works for you works for us. Um, I also wanna stress that there are free scholarship search platforms. Now this is for outside scholarships from a third party source. You can apply for as many as you want. You have to do the legwork. Uh, and then if you receive that funding, it will go towards your bill directly. If you would need base financial aid, um, we would have to review to make sure that it fits within your need. Uh, but that is something that can help you sort of defray the cost of your education during an academic year. And I would say if that's something you're looking into, get on that now. They will have some, some deadlines that you would need to meet. People ask about work study opportunities on campus as well. Uh, these are paid employment opportunities. Now you have to be a need-based financial aid applicant and recipient to be eligible for federal work study. And it is our priority to help those students to find jobs early in the term. But it doesn't mean that if you don't get work study that you don't have the opportunity to work. We do have the Bentley work program as well. And we typically open up jobs to campus wide to all students a little bit later in the fall. So so usually like late October or early November. On the next slide, I have just a couple of resources, um, particularly with the scholarship search engines for those outside sources that you might be eligible for. FastWeb is a big one, as is collegescholarships.org. We keep for alternative loan funding, uh, a list of lenders that meet a certain criteria and are known to the lending, um, you know, higher ed lending uh, world on elmselect.com, but that is not an extensive list. That is just a list of a number of lenders that our students have used in the past. Uh, and you could go to your federal credit union. Um, you know, some people look through alternative sources too, like maybe a home equity line, whatever works for you, again, works for us. And I also like to include a couple of resources just for our international students where they can get information about financial aid and what they need to know when they're transitioning, you know, the, the cost of moving and things like that. And they can also find some outside scholarship search engines through these links as well. I think from here, we're moving on to Suzanne's section for billing and paying tuition. So here's some um, important dates we want you to remember for the fall semester. So we'll begin posting charges to your Workday account. Um, so that begins on the week of July 11th through the 13th. You may see some tuition posted or something on your account and um, something you're expecting that's not on there. Um, so we will send you an email when the um, uh, everything's been finalized and the bills are ready to be viewed. So um, just wait for that email that goes to the student and the third party users. And we use your Bentley email address. So it's really important that you're checking your Bentley email and you're reading your emails from our offices because um, it's full of really important information. So we'll begin posting those charges in July and then the um, bill due date for the fall semester for undergraduate students is August 7th. That being said, we do have a payment plan. If you're interested in that, it can be up to four payments. And that begins on August 15th. You can sign up anytime before August 15th, all the way up to September 20th. That will be the deadline and the last day to sign up for the plan. If you decide to decide, um, sign up for the plan after August 15th, then it goes down to a three pay payment plan or you know, vice versa. So we'll talk a little more about that later. Next slide, please. Um, so our rate sheet can be found on the student accounts website, which is also full of lots of information. Um, so that'll give you the tuition and the fees and 
um, the residence charges and things like that. So if you want to view that, you would just go to our student accounts website. Um, just so you're aware, student accounts are responsible for setting up your third party users that need access to view your student account and make payments. So if you have a parent or a relative or a friend or whoever may, um, you want us to be able to discuss your account with or to view your bill or to make payments, they would have their own login. Then you go into your workday and you set that up for them. Um, with an email address and then every you know email when we let you know that the view um, the bill is ready to be viewed and things like that that would go to both you and your third party user so you need to set them up with the access um, and then students and third party users will uh, be emailed when activity is posted and um, but you should also continue to monitor your student account throughout the semester. You may get something like a parking violation or a new charge that's posted after that initial bill. So you always wanna be viewing your, your um, account during the semester to see if there's anything going on that you weren't aware of. Um, statements are real time and cha um, change based on the activity on your student account. So like I said, so if you get a, a parking violation two months into the semester, then that, you know, that will go on then um, and you'll be able to view it on your workday accounts. Past due holds are placed on unresolved accounts 14 days after the due date, and there is a $100 late payment fee that's charged 30 days after the due date. So um, always contact us if there's something going on and let us know so that you're aware. Um, and we would send emails to you and your third party user before those um, things happen. And that's just, just a sample um, of the billing statement, which you can um, view and print from your Workday portal once they're ready. So in the first section, you'll notice we post the charges. So you'll see like your tuition and your activity fee and any charges in the first section. In the sec second section is payments and credits. So if you've made a payment or we received your scholarship from an outside source, it's gonna be in here. And then this third section is anticipated payments. So this is um, any aid that we know you're getting and we're gonna um, put it in anticipated so that you have of, um, we know it's coming and then, you know, you have a um, good balance due. So we've deducted it from the balance due. We, it may not have arrived, but we are aware that it is coming and we've deducted it from your balance. So only students can um, enroll in the payment plan. Your third party users can make the payments for you once you've enrolled in the plan, but the student actually has to go in and enroll in the plan and you do that on work day. Um, the fall plan is a maximum of four installments. It's August 15th through November 15th. Those are the two dates, depending on when you enroll. And as I stated earlier, if you sign up on August 16th, keep in mind that that's gonna drop down to three payments. So it's it's going to take whatever is due on your account and divide by four or three or two. So if you signed up after September 15th, then you're going to only get a two payment plan. Um, so you'll want to do that as soon as possible just to spread your payments out. Um, the plan is interest free, but there is a $35 enrollment fee and that's per semester. Keep in mind when you, the student signs up for the plan, you must agree to a terms and conditions before the the plan is finalized. So if you don't do that, then you won't be set up in the payment plan. So it's going to be a notification in your inbox and you just agree to that and then it finalizes your plan. Um, there are past due holds that go on two weeks after the due date. And then um, that same day, a $20 late fee will be assessed on each um, payment that's due. Um, students enroll in the plan every semester. So this doesn't um, go through the entire academic year, it's per semester and it does not carry over. So if you'd like to do it for the fall and spring, you actually have to go in and enroll each semester. And that $35 enrollment fee does go per semester. Okay, and there are um, several ways to make payments on your account. Um, the first one is like an e-check, an ACH payment. Um, and you can do that um, you, by setting up um, the payment and refund elections on your Workday portal. So when you do this, um, you use a routing number and this is um, set up in your Workday and you can get, you can make payments from this 
by eCheck for free. And also this would be um, used if you were getting a refund on your account, then you could get direct deposit to the same account. So once you've set this up, this stays with you unless you need to change it for it, that will uh, be saved in your Workday portal. You can also make credit card payments online. However, there is a convenience fee paid to the payment processor. So domestic credit cards are a 2.85% fee and international credit cards are 4.25% and that's on whatever you're paying. So if you're paying 100, that's percentages on 100 or 10,000, it's gonna be. So when you go in to do the credit card payment before it's finalized, it will tell you how much the fee is going to be. And then you'll agree to that if, you, if that is what you wanna do. But keep in mind, you know, the ACH payments are free. So that may be a better option. We accept paper checks in person or they can be mailed to our office or you can come by our cashier's office located in the Rao building. So we can always accept paper checks. We do not accept cash. So um, paper checks only. And then, um, or that can be like a money order or a cashier's check, but no cash. And then um, all international and domestic wires would go through Flywire. So this is our website. It's also, um, this is their website and it's also on our website. So you just go there, select Bentley and um, it will walk you through how to make that wire payment. And we do also accept cryptocurrency payments. So that is on the student account website. And again, you just go to the website, click on the link, and then you fill out the information asked and the crypto payment will come through there. Um, refund requests. Once there's an actual credit on your account, so as I showed you on the student statement, there's that anticipated aid section. So once that anticipated aid is actually on your account, so we've received the scholarship payment from your outside source or financial aid has finalized all your aid and then um, that actual credit, you can apply for a refund. So you just go into your Workday portal. Um, you'll want to have set up your payment and refund elections before this so that you can get a direct deposit. That's not an option. You can get a, a check or if you made a credit card payment, then that refund will go back to your credit card. Um, but the first step would be to set up your banking information if you haven't already done that. And then the second step is to um, create request and then um, you'll select refund. And then as soon as that money's available, we'll send it to you by whatever means you paid by or to your direct deposit. And we're here to help. So any questions on any of this or anything, you know, you're new and um, there's lots of questions that come up. That's why we're here. So call us, email us, and we'll get right back to you. That's, you know, no question is um, just send us all your questions and we're always happy to help you. All right, I'm going to field some of the stuff coming in through the QA. And I wanted to throw in a point about the refund. Um, a student who say, uh, has financial aid or borrows a loan that exceeds those build expenses that we talked about earlier, they can get that refund to help them cover the cost of books, to help them cover the cost of their personal expenses. So that's what you, why you might see an excess of aid there. Um, I also like to point out that you can use a combination of financing methods. So you can do a bulk payment from like a relative and then uh, uh, enroll in that payment plan that Suzanne was talking about. So you can use any combination. You can do the payment plan and borrow a little bit of an alternative loan. It's not all of one thing or all of the other. It can be a combo. So I'm just going to go through some of the questions. Um, the first question was about the difference in uh, monthly minimum minimum payments now and after four years of private loans. I really think that's probably a question that you want to look into a loan calculator. The lenders out there have really good calculators. Um, NEFA, Massachusetts Education Financing Authority, they're a good one. So I'd say that's probably your best place to kind of start there. You can certainly contact the financial aid office to talk a little bit more about alternative loans. Um, I have another one I saw here for... Um, if you were applying for loans and waiting for an invoice in order to do that, how can you make the payment deadline? 
So as Suzanne was saying, you're going to get the bill, the, the notification that you can access that invoice and you can apply for an alternative loan. Late fees and the like aren't happening till a little bit later. We know it's your first time and you're trying to um, do your best to get this together. And it is a high volume time for pro certifying and processing alternative loans. So we recognize that we're reviewing them twice a week uh, and you, it's going to be it's going to be timely. Uh, you can look at your cost of attendance and make the determination of how much you think you're going to need after subtracting any other aid out of that cost of attendance, and that's what you're going to apply for. I would also say if you're looking the alternative uh, loan route, you want to apply for what you think you need for the entire academic year and not just term by term so that you don't have to go through the process twice because at that point we'll have already certified it and you won't have to worry about that by the time that the fall bill is roll, um, coming around. Um, I was looking at this one for you, Suzanne. Is there a way for grandparents to make one-time tuition payments without being set up on workday and receive emails and bills, et cetera? So then um, you could just mail in a check. Um, if you have a checking account, you could just make the check. Um, my only suggestion would be to put the student name and the ID number if you have it in the memo so that we know who it's for or just add a little note, but you could stop by the office or mail in a check. Um, you wouldn't be able to do the e-check payments um, unless you were set up. However, your, your student could give you their access and help you go in and make the e-check payments. Um, or if you needed to wire the money, then they would have to help you do that through their portal if you didn't want to be set up as a third party user. Yeah, and I would just stress that the communication once a student matriculates, it's they own their account information. So our primary communication is with the student. So anyone needs to be watching for any emails that are coming from our offices because they're very important. Um, and it's their responsibility for making sure that they're meeting the deadlines and sharing that information with their families. There was an earlier question about getting a Bentley email address and login into Workday. Um, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer that. <laughs> Just, does, is that something we need to um, send out an update later or Caroline or Mia, can you, could you answer that? It's a, so if this is for the students specifically, they will have to sign the tech ethics agreement and then they would get a Bentley email. Once they complete that agreement and get their Bentley email, then they'll be able to log into Workday via their Bentley credentials. Great. I'm just going straight down the line here. How does the disbursement of parent loans work, like the PLUS loan, et cetera? So once we certify a loan, um, we make sure that it fits within the cost of attendance and um, it's not exceeding that because you can't borrow more than your costs. And then it's certified as far as the lender is concerned and they will send the disbursements based on the dates that we've set up. Um, so depending on when you apply for this loan and when it's certified. So if you've applied, you're applying for it now, it's getting certified in the summer it will disperse at the beginning of each term, each portion of it. And if we're talking about a parent federal plus loan, federal loans are always split evenly between terms. It's a requirement. So you need to be thinking about how much you wanna borrow for the year. You also need to be aware of any origination fees uh, that are associated with this. I can't remember the percentage offhand, but it's like 4.242% um, uh, maybe, it might be a little bit off there. I'm just uh, throwing it out there, but it's something along those lines. Okay. Um, sorry, there's a lot of the loan questions for me, Suzanne. Uh, I got a question about federal and private loans. Do you need to use both to finance the cost of your education each year for college? I would recommend that you look at the federal loans first if you are eligible, uh, because they tend to be better interest rates, lower interest rates. They are available to students without any kind of credit check. Um, and you're able to apply for those year after year using the FAFSA. Um, alternative loans will have different um, requirements per lender. So you might have to go into repayment on at least the interest earlier, or um, if the interest rate could be higher, uh, most students will most definitely need a co-signer for those loans, where your federal loans you do not need. Uh, and there are a excuse me, a lot of like repayment options with the federal loans that might not exist for a, for a private loan. So you can look at both of them, but we usually say take your federal loans into consideration first because they tend to be a little bit more generous. Uh, Suzanne, the payment plan uh, per year or per semester, I think you covered it, but just refresh us. <laughs> yes, so the payment plan is per semester. It's a $35 enrollment fee. That's for each semester. And the fall one, it goes through August through um Sorry, um, August through November. 
True blank. Yeah, so the payment plan for the fall is August through November. The payment plan for the spring semester is December through March. Great. I think we already got the workday account. Um, another for you. Can I connect my bank account to pay without wire transfer? Does that make sense? So um, when you are setting up your payment elections and adding in your bank account, that's for e-check and ACH payments. Can scholarship checks be um, payable to the student? Can scholarship checks payable to the student be signed over to the university? Um, I'm going to say one thing for that. If you receive outside like outside scholarship sources, you need to advise the university once you get those notifications. So send those to the financial aid office as soon as you are aware that this funding is coming so that both financial aid and student accounts are, know that it's on its way. Um, in terms of being signed over, it can be done. Do they come into your office to do that, Suzanne? Yeah, so you would just endorse the back of the check. Um, you can do that in our office or you can endorse it and mail it to us. Um, it's probably more secure to bring it to us, and then we will apply it to your accounts. Great. Uh, next for me, how or where to accept federal loans? When you submit a FAFSA, if you're eligible for federal loans, that's your application for them. And there are two requirements that you need to complete to make sure that you're eligible. If you don't complete those requirements, they, they will pend on your account and they will fall off at the end of September. What you need to do is go on to federal Oh, is it federalaid.gov uh, and complete the master promissory note and the um, loan entrance counseling and students sign in with their federal student aid ID to complete this. It has to be attached to their social security number. Uh, on page three of an award letter, it would tell you that those are the requirements that need to be done. And we do send um, reminders to students through the, the summer and the, and the fall, but if you're able to go on and complete those requirements today, they should take you no longer than 30 minutes. All right, should the 529 payments be sent directly, Suzanne? Yes, yeah, so those do come direct to the um, college, so you would want to contact your 529 to request the payment be sent to Bentley. Um, it's this very standard form with all the 529 plans, so you would contact your 529, tell them what you want them to send us, and that will come directly to us. Great, I'm going to skip. That Oh, when is the due date to enroll the payment plan? Will you just remind us a little bit about that? Um, so the payment plan starts on August 15th. So if you want the four pay, you'll want to do that um, by August 15th. Um, and then you'll get the four pay. If you do it after, again, it drops down to three. So um, the deadline to enroll, the last day to enroll in the payment plan is September 20th, and then it will be no longer available. Keep in mind, if you do it after September 15th, then it drops down to two payments for the payment plan. Great. Um, so it looks like someone's applied for a student loan and it's waiting on Bentley to certify uh, at this point for the upcoming academic year. We haven't begun the certification process. We're actually beginning this week. We're only going to certify alternative loans if a student who's in the like is applying for financial aid has completed that. If you're not applying for financial aid, we can certify those now, but that process is beginning this week. Um, so anybody that has had a loan certified before the bill um, get it becomes available, we'll see that pending on their account. Uh, but again, we will be waiting for the funds to come from the um, lender and disperse at the beginning of the term. So that process is starting uh, soon. If there is anything that we're missing for any reason, then we would contact a family to let them know. All right. Um, how and when does a student apply for federal work study on campus? So we begin to send out notification that jobs are being posted in mid-August and that information, student employment is part of the financial aid office. So they will send out notification about that, that it will be available. And that is done through work day as well. All right, let's see, lots of good questions. Um, okay, thank you for some not sure I understand what this is saying. So incremental money for paying via installments versus one-time payment is 35. I think this is asking like, so when you're doing the payment plan, the, the one-time payment is for the service. It's the $35 per term. And you don't have to enroll in both terms. You could just choose to pay in bulk for fall and then figure out your bearings and then enroll in the fall. Uh, excuse me, the spring payment plan. But if you do choose to use this service, it's $35 
for the service, but there's no interest that accrues or anything along the way. All right. Um, so when, it, I think this is sort of alluding to something I mentioned before, but will the FAFSA automatically appear as a deduction on the bill? So any aid that you've applied for through the federal government or through the institution or any scholarships that you have received through the institution, they will show up at reducing your bill when you receive it. The only time um, you, it might not show there is if there's some issue that needs to be resolved internally, but that's something that we would be reaching out to students for uh, individually, but it's it's uncommon. If you have been awarded any kind of financial aid, you will see it pending. If you're getting federal loans, just make sure you're completing those requirements. Otherwise they will fall off of that account later because you didn't complete the requirements. As long as those are done, we can expect that aid will be dispersed on, at the beginning of the term. All right. Looks like someone logged on the other day um, and none of the links worked. Was there a system issue? I think maybe, um, yeah, go ahead. There's no system issue that I'm aware of. So my suggestion would be have your son um, call the office when he's online and we will walk him through how to set up the third party user. And if he's getting an error message, he can tell us what it is and we can troubleshoot it from there. But I would definitely have him call our office while he's doing it so that we can walk him through it. Awesome. Uh, someone's asking if they don't have an outside loan for the fall term, but want to consider it for the spring, can they do that? Yes. We usually tell people to apply for what they need for the full year, but you can go term by term. You can always reduce a loan if you don't need as much, but you can't always increase a loan. So just make sure that you are getting what you think you need. Um, you can also reapply for a loan uh, if you didn't get quite what you needed. But yeah, if you think you can pay for fall and you want to borrow for spring only, you can do a spring only spring only loan um, and you can make adjustments through the year you know it's uh it's pretty flexible for federal loans say you decided to decline your unsubsidized loan if you're a recipient from the federal government and you later decide that you need it you can request that we reinstate it you just need to email a financial aid counselor to do so um, and if you borrow an alternative loan and you come into some lottery money then we can reduce that at your request as well all right Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little lost here. Um, for international students, do you facilitate bank account opening for their expenses? How would you advise them? Um, I would just go to uh, one of the local banks and they'll assist you on opening an account. Great. And then another international student question, can they apply for work at the university? Yes, you have to have um, a specific visa status to do so. Um, I believe it's F1 and... Uh, losing on the other one, but um, I would have you look at our website, go to the student employment um, office website and contact us and we can give you more information about that. Um, someone's asking if there's a particular private lender we recommend. We don't have, we aren't able to, to recommend anybody specific. There's, there's many, many lenders out there. Like I said with the Elm Select website, those are lenders that are known in the industry and meet a certain criteria and our students have used in the past. But I mean, there are a lot out there. There's not one um, that we recommend. It's really what, what you wanna use. There is a tool within that that you can do side-by-side -side comparisons. So you're really trying to see uh, what you can get in terms of uh, interest rate or repayment terms and what's gonna work best for your financing. Um, and I, I will say, you know, the tools are really great. We're happy to walk you through them, but your best resource is probably going to be the, the private lenders themselves. Okay, let's see. Another one. Um, I can take this one. So how can we apply for the payment plan? You, um, yeah. It's actually not open yet. So once um, we post those charges in July and you get the email stating that everything's finalized, then you can go in and sign up for the payment plan on your Workday portal. Um, and like I said, only the student can do that, um, but it, it won't be available until we actually post the charges. Great, the next one's for me. So if you've completed your loan requirements, uh, you wanna know what the interest rate is, they're actually posted. Um, I think they should be posted now for the upcoming year. I don't remember them offhand, but if you go to studentaid.gov, that's going to give you the best information about federal loans, uh, the origination fees, the interest rates for the year. And those interest rates year after year get announced around this time, uh, and they are for the life of that loan. So if it's it was like 4.5% in the past, that's going to be for those loans for those 
that year. And then next year, whatever those interest rates are, are going to apply to those loans. And it's going to stick their fixed interest rates for the life of the loan. Okay, if a student's eligible for work study, uh, when do you need to request for the fall term? As I mentioned, we're going to send out notification that uh, jobs have been posted, that happens in August, and that's when you can start applying. I will also emphasize that you wanna apply for a lot of jobs. We've got a, a lot of students that wanna work, um, not necessarily enough jobs to allow everybody to work. So um, you know, keep your, your search broad uh, and apply to several. If you are having trouble, our student employment manager, uh, Carla Aguirre, she's really good at trying to help people get placed and you can contact the, through the student employment website or through the directly through the financial aid uh, email as well. Okay, um, are there ATMs on campus? If so, for what bank? I've never been asked this question. There are. Do you know what banks they are, Suzu? Bank of America and Santander. I knew you would know. Um, okay. And then to apply for any of the jobs on campus, do students need a um, copy of their social security card, driver's license? Yes. So in order to work on campus, once you become, um, once you get hired, you do have to come to our office to complete uh, the I-9 process. You have to do that within three days of starting your job uh, or you will not be allowed to work. And you do need documentation. We will email students all about that along with the requirements and for when you're applying for jobs in the summertime, in the late summer. I think we did cover those others a little bit previously. Oh, wait, there's a new one. Um, if a grandparent is interested in contributing to tuition costs, are we better off having them send payment to Bentley before applying for private loans or getting the private loan and then applying the payment toward the loan? It's a great question. Um, I think if you wanna apply whatever funding you're able to towards the bill first and then apply for an alternative loan, that's the best bet for you. However, there's no penalty typically for early repayment of any educational loans. Um, so you could be in a five-year repayment plan and then you, uh, graduate and you get a job and you are earning big bucks and you feel you can put more towards that. So I think just generally um, you want to put your money towards the bill and then borrow what you think you need to just in case you don't want to accrue any interest unnecessarily. Um, and that, you know, if you want to be able to repay early, that's fine. You can, you can pay a lender, you can pay the federal government early at any point with no penalty. And there's just one last question really about um, private loans and the lowest interest rates. They're gonna vary. Uh, every private lender is gonna have their, their range. Um, so you can do side-by-side -side comparisons of those. There's, you know, we use Elm Select, but there's lots of tools out there and they're gonna vary between variable rates and fixed interest rates. So um, it really is gonna be case by case, product by product because each lender might have multiple product, products as well. All right, we made it through them all. Anyone else? <laughs> well, I'll just say we're very open. We welcome questions. We have individual counselors that can assist you as well. Uh, our, our staff like we're responsible for case splits within the financial aid office are posted on our website. Uh, so just along the way, anything that comes up, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. All right. Thank you so much, Lauren and Suzanne. We really appreciate you taking the time to go through all of these things. And feel free if you have any more questions to email these two offices. And we do have an upcoming live chat next Tuesday with our academic services team. So if you have any questions about academics at Bentley, make sure that you log on to that as well. So thank you for spending part of your afternoon with us. We hope you have a good day. Thank you.